The 2020 Triumph Rocket 3 journalist rides and reviews are beginning to roll in, and here I am just waiting to see it in person. I guess we'll have to settle for videos and pictures until then, but hey, at least we can talk about it, right? I'm not going to rehash all of the news and information out there about the Rocket 3, but you can go check out Visor Down's channel for an in-depth review along with Motor Bob for the rest of that information. That said, I do want to give a few thoughts on it from a Power Cruiser owner perspective. For those that don't know, the 2020 Rocket 3 is the successor to the previous infamous Rocket 3. I would say it was one of few bikes I wouldn't put my M109 up against in a race. <laughs> I was lucky enough though to get my hands on one years ago at a Triumph demo day and I must say that I was thoroughly impressed and I enjoyed myself. It shocked me on how well it not only handled its weight, but delivered its power in a smooth and comfortable way. That ride experience was powered by this beefy 2300cc dual overhead cam liquid cooled straight 3 engine, which at the time was the largest production motorcycle engine with 148 horsepower and over 160 pound feet of torque. And no, Boss Hoss G and block engines don't count this time, folks. I'm sorry. But here we are now with the new revamped, redesigned, better than ever, all that and more 2020 Rocket 3R and Rocket 3 GT. See, the journey started with the limited edition Rocket 3 Triumph Factory Custom that was announced earlier this year sporting a $29,000 price tag. At its core, it's the same bike as the GT and the, and the R, but it was Triumph's take on making a carbon fiber bedazzle model straight from the factory. There's a lot of deliciousness going on with the carbon fiber and of course we have video courtesy of Motobot right here. But since then, other models have gotten the TFC treatment like the recently announced Thruxton RS and Bonneville Bobber. That said, the Rocket 3R will be priced at $21,900 and the GT at $22,600, which puts them both right in line with competition like the Ducati X Diavel, Ducati Diavel 1260, Harley Fat Bob 114, and Harley FX DR 114. Now all of these are worthy contenders in my opinion, but this time around I'm looking for the big CCs and nothing less. Because you know, we like big CCs and we cannot lie around here, right? <laughs> and with all those cubic inches, you think with the record you stop there, but Triumph had to flex a bit. So they revamped the engine to a 2500cc version, pumping out 165 horsepower to the crank at a peak of 6,000 RPMs and 163 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 RPMs. There's enough torque on that chassis to force my smile even if I didn't want to. But even with the extra displacement, Triumph engineers still managed to shave off 80 plus pounds, making my Suzuki N109R seem even more overweight than we already know it is. But that's completely besides the point. I've tried to get the N109R to lose weight, but she's not having it. Don't tell her I told you that. <laughs> but yeah, and with all that power that the Rocket 3 has, it's got all the tech, bells and whistles that modern high-end motorcycles have, which sweetens the deal. It's the most premium and feature-packed power cruiser that your money can buy. And I personally just want to give it some of my own loving. But someone like me looking for an upgrade to my power cruiser experience, an 800 pound thick one is already in my realm. I'm already used to big displacements like the Indian Chieftain, the Indian Challenger, and my homie and lover, the 1800cc Suzuki N109R. But the 2500 cc Rocket 3 is going to be new and exciting territory. However, the question remains on whether a bagger actually fits both my character and my riding style. And I know many of you have followed my journey over the years and have recommended upgrading to a bagger or at least turning the M109R into a touring bike, but I haven't fully come to terms with either of those options yet. See, behind the scenes, I've had mixed feelings on whether a touring bike like the Chieftain or the Challenger would be the bike for me, especially since my riding habits have changed since owning a 2018 Indian Sky Bobber. I love the pickup and go feel of the Indian Scott Bobber, but never liked the fact that it wasn't built for long distance riding to begin with. I've always gravitated towards the N109R for longer rides. And after doing an 1100 mile trip over the weekend to Orlando for Blockhead Moto's Florida Moto Meetup, I realized just how capable my N109R is in its stock form. I still haven't edited all of that adventure yet, so stay tuned if you'd like to see that. But it was a great time of bonding and loving between motorcycle and rider. You know, all the lovey-dovey stuff. But it definitely proved to me that there's more to this power cruiser market than people are willing to give it. Also, shout out to Gen Z Biker for getting the awesome shots of me riding. It's pretty sick. All right, so how does this relate to the Rocket 3? Well, in my frame of mind anyway, 
it's a solid upgrade path for those looking for a power cruiser that can do more. It's not meant to be a direct replacement for the Touring or hardback models out there, but it's the upgrade to the N109R I've looked to for years. And this isn't to say that my N109R isn't capable anymore, but experiencing the next generation of power is something worth going for. It's capable of like touring and ripping apart roads on the way to your destination. It's never short on power to put that grin back on your face when the ride becomes mundane. A simple crack of the throttle puts you in the mood of bliss and intense feelings of euphoria. That dopamine drip starts all over again the moment the power band kicks in. I get those feelings now with the 109, but for some reason I'm looking for something to give me that and more. I'm not sure if the Rocket 3 is that remedy, but I'm willing to give it my time to find out. And after completing that weekend getaway on the 109, I found that a part of me likes packing smaller amounts of supplies on my trips. It kind of forces me to be more in the moment and creative rather than focusing on an abundance of items and situations, trying to plan for everything versus just letting it happen as it comes. And the whole idea of less being more is changing the way I live my life along with my purchase decisions. I like keeping things simple and the power cruiser design and purpose encourages that narrative. But what do you all think so far on the styling and overall package of the new Rocket 3? The first one didn't leave as much of a mark on me like the Bonneville Barber did, but I totally get the appeal. I think the new styling and package complements my personality and riding habits. The factor that I do keep coming to though is the price tag. For the price of the Rocket 3, you're in the price range of other bikes like the Indian Challenger at $21,999 and Harley Road Glide, which are more comfortable but lack the overall performance of the Rocket 3. They're a lot more practical, right? So I feel like I'd be choosing between comfort, performance, convenience, etc. But obviously, there's a lot more to this than touring, including everyday riding, work commuting, and desired features, so the conversation has many different layers. But I'd like to know what you all think about that in the comments. And of course, as always, I could just stick with the 2007 Suzuki N109R that I have. But I have an itch for something new, and many of you that have been following my journey have been patiently waiting on a replacement to my Indian Scout Bobber. So what do you all think? Could you see a Triumph Rocket 3 in the channel's future? Or maybe a Challenger? Or should I wait for something from Harley or Indian to answer with their own power cruisers to the Rocket 3? Either way, I still have to get my hands on it and experience it for myself. And of course, as always, give you all my take on it in that moment. But being a power cruiser enthusiast, I'm loving every single bit of the Rocket 3. I will at least get a chance to see it in person at the Triumph Motorcycle Reveal Party in January and maybe hopefully a ride on it soon after. But until then, video and our discussions will have to make do. But for those of you that haven't already, consider sticking around and hitting that subscribe button for future content from me and maybe I'll surprise you. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch y'all in the next one.